Welcome to the Warrior in Progress podcast. This podcast features honest and vulnerable discussions about how to make lasting mindset shifts. Through these mindset shifts, you'll be able to commit to yourself and stop sabotaging yourself so you can transform your life. I'm your host, Jennifer McKee, certified health coach and motivational speaker. Look, I've been there. I've done that. I've lost over 50% of my body weight naturally. That's 185 pounds. I invite you to subscribe to the Warrior in Progress podcast for motivational, inspirational, and thought-provoking topics where I'll share with you some practical tools that I've learned on my journey so far that will empower you and help you to access that inner warrior that's inside each and every one of us. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Warrior in Progress podcast. I'm so happy to have you here and I'm talking about something today that I hear from so many people and I myself relate completely, which is help. I'm out of control. I feel so hopeless, so powerless to start making the choices I need to make for myself. How do I get my control back? So I want to talk today about how to get your power back, how to regain control when you feel out of control, or you are out of control. So I used to self-sabotage, right? I might be making some changes, healthy changes, and I would commit to those things for a period of time. And then all of a sudden, I would sabotage myself. And what I found for myself was a lot of times that would happen for a couple of reasons. One, I was trying to do too much you know, exercise seven days a week, eat 100% clean, uh, never eat my favorite foods, like be very strict, 1200 calories or less a day, you know, things like that. And I got so completely overwhelmed. The second reason that I would sabotage myself, main reason anyway, that I would sabotage myself was because of the fact that I did not know how to cope with life on life's terms without using something to soothe myself or to numb myself. So when stress happened, when life happened, when life got in the way, when life didn't follow my plans, I couldn't cope. I didn't know how to cope. I didn't want to cope. So what did I do in those cases? Well, I turned to food because I could control food, right? I could, I, it's like it gave a false sense of control. You know, I was like, well, I'm an adult now, and if I want to eat pizza for breakfast, then I can do that. So it felt like I was controlling it, but actually I was completely out of control. I was allowing my inner child, and you could argue inner teenager, to run my life. You know, if you asked a a kid, (laughs) what do you want for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? They might say ice cream for all three meals, right? (laughs) I was allowing myself to, maybe not for all three meals, some days I did, but you know, I was allowing myself to just eat whatever I wanted to eat and do whatever I wanted to do because I felt so powerless over people, places, things, and situations that by giving myself permission to eat whatever I wanted to eat, comforted me, soothed me, made me feel in control. But like I said, it was an illusion. I was actually completely out of control. And when I started recognizing that, right, that I was out of control, I felt powerless, hopeless, depressed. I wanted to give up. I told myself things like, well, I guess I'm just meant to be obese. I guess I'm just meant to be unhealthy. I guess this is just how my life is meant to be. I'm, I'm meant to be unhappy. You know, maybe other people can find happiness, but I can't. Maybe other people can be loved, but I can't. Nobody could possibly love me if they knew the real me, right? I played a victim. Life was happening to me. It definitely wasn't happening for me. When I thought about change, I had a lot of fear. When I thought about taking my power back, I had a lot of fear. 
fear of failure, fear of the effort required, the effort required to change. I actually even had a fear of success. I also resisted, you know, I resisted change big time. I told myself things like, well, I know how to lose a weight because, you know, a few years ago I lost 60 pounds and I did it in a healthy ish way. So like, I know what to do. I don't need to, I don't need anybody else, right? I can do this. It's a, but guess what? I couldn't do it on my own. I could not do it on my own. I could not lose a weight and keep it off on my own. I had to stop resisting. I had to start accepting where I was today, not where I was two weeks ago, not where I was two years ago, not where I was five years ago, not where I wanted to be in a month's time, but where I was right now in this current moment. I had to accept that and I had to stop resisting. I had to surrender that Jennifer's way was not working. Jennifer's way of always looking for a quick fix, always led to self-sabotage and me being even more out of control than I was previously, right? I had to surrender. And it came down to this. You have two choices. You can keep doing what you're doing. That's not working. Or you can make a different choice today You have that power. You have the power to make a different choice today. We can't change the past. The future isn't here yet. All we have is the present moment. Where will your life lead you if you do not make any changes? If you do not commit to any changes, where will your life be in one month? six months, one year, two years, three years, when I asked myself those questions, it scared me to think about where I would be. It scared me more to keep doing what I was doing than to change. So where do you start? If you want to take your power back and you want to regain control of your life, where do you start? Number one, integrity. Integrity to yourself. Commit to yourself. Set small goals and commit to those goals. Does that mean you're perfect? No. When you find you're out of integrity with yourself, when you're not committing to the promises or goals that you set for yourself, you need to check in with somebody else and let somebody else know that. And you need to reassess, do I need to change my goal? Do I need to make it more realistic, more attainable, more easier? Meet yourself where you are and build on it over time. You know, just like I talked about in my last podcast episode about creating healthy habits. Start small, easy, build on it over time. I, I've had a client say to me before, like, okay, like, let's, I'll give an example. Let's say that you're eating fast food or out at restaurants or something like that seven days a week. I had a client once where we set a goal of eating out five times a week or less. And she said, uh, how, is eating, how is eating out five times a week going to help me lose weight? And I said, well, that's better than eating out seven times a week. Do you think that you could eliminate eating out altogether? She said, no. I said, okay. We have to start where you are. You start at five times or less eating out. We work on that and then you gradually decrease that over time because eating out five times a week, like I said, is better than eating out seven days a week. Do you see the logic? Progress, not perfection, small change leads to massive transformation over time. So the first step to regaining your control and your power back is to work on your integrity with yourself by committing to small, attainable and realistic goals and holding yourself accountable for those goals. Second step, challenge your negative self-talk. I had a, a podcast episode on the inner critic. If you haven't listened to that, 
I highly recommend you do. The inner critic is the negative voice in our head that is making us feel less than. It's the voice that beats us up, that makes us feel like we're not good enough, that we're a failure. Challenge that voice. Challenge that voice in a positive way. So if I'm telling myself something like, this is too hard, I can't do this, change is impossible for me, maybe I can say, actually, I can take a multivitamin today. Actually, I could drink two cups of water today. Actually, I could eat out one time today versus three times. Any positive change that you do for yourself is better than nothing. And if you commit and you do that over time and you build on it, you will be amazed at how good you feel about yourself because you will be repairing your belief and your trust in yourself. So the second step is to challenge that negative self-talk, that inner critic. There is another voice inside of you. There is a positive voice inside of you, a voice that wants more out of your life. That voice wants more. That voice is telling you, you're an athlete. You're good enough. Listen to that voice. It may be faint, You may barely be able to hear it, but if you didn't have that voice, you would not be listening to this podcast right now. I encourage you to shift the power instead of giving it to your inner critic, start giving more power to that other voice in your head, that other voice in your head that wants more out of your life. The third step, forgive yourself and others. You may have made choices you regret in the past. Others may have harmed you, betrayed you, not been fair to you. This is the thing. Everybody is at a different point in their life's journey. I'm not saying that it makes it right what somebody else did or said to you, but you would be forgiving somebody else for you, not for them. Because when we hold resentment, For somebody else, the only person that hurts is us. Forgiveness is key for your mental sanity. It is key. And like I said, a lot of times people forget to forgive themselves. Forgive yourselves. You did the best you could at the time with the knowledge that you had. Learn from it. Learn from it. Life is happening for you, not to you. It's happening for you. There's a, there's a lot of learning lessons we have, we have in life, right? We have to learn certain things in life. We cannot learn if we don't make mistakes. And like, you know, I, I don't like to say mistakes. What do I like to say, guys? Yeah, learning opportunities, right? I don't believe that there is a right or wrong choice. I believe that we make the best choice we can in the moment with the knowledge that we have and where we are in our lives. There's always room to learn, not to beat ourselves up. There's a difference to give ourselves love and compassion, forgiveness, and learn from it so that the next time we make a smarter choice, progress, not perfection. The fourth step to regaining your control. Focus on what is in your control. Okay, so this is one of the biggest things that I've noticed with other people and myself. We give our power to everything outside of ourselves. People, places, things, situations. We give our power away. And that's a very lonely place to be. And it's a very painful place to be. And so what do we do? We turn to things outside of ourselves to numb ourselves and to cope, right? If I'm giving my power to another person, if I'm giving uh, my power to uh, another thing like work, um, if I'm giving my power to a particular situation, like if I'm going through a lawsuit or something like that, like if I'm giving my power away, I am really, it's like, you know, it's like a hamster running on a wheel, like running really fast on a wheel, running fast and getting nowhere when we give our power away. Because we cannot control other people, places, things, and situations. I cannot control 
how somebody's going to react or respond to me, right? What can I control? Focus on what is in your control. Well, I can control how I talk to myself. I can control what I do for myself. You know, like if the nutrition, the the food that goes into my mouth, the water, other things that go into my body, I can control that. I can control if I'm going to my doctor's appointments and doing other kind of self-care activities. I can control that. I can also control with practice my reaction to other people. If not just other people, but people, places, things. I can control my reaction. Now that does take some practice, at least for me it did. But we can also learn. Like I said, we can learn from our from our choices. I believe I gave this analogy in a previous podcast, but I'm going to give it again. You know, if we're if we're trying something, let's say that we do something and we make a quote unquote mistake. You know, we don't. A lot of times, we'll just tell ourselves, "Okay, I give up. I give up. I can't do this. This is too hard. Woe is me." I'm a victim, life's happening to me, let me just eat my way or let me just drink or just let me take drugs or let me like do a whole bunch of shopping online or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that I'm doing that's outside of myself to, to sort of soothe myself or to numb myself, right? That's the thinking. So the analogy is if you're driving from New York to California and you get a flat tire in Cleveland, You don't drive all the way back to New York to change your flat tire, right? You don't say, oh, well, I guess like I got to go all the way back to New York to change my flat tire or I guess I'm stuck in Cleveland. I guess I'm just stuck in Cleveland. I'm going to stay in Cleveland the rest of my life. What do you do? You change your flat tire in Cleveland and you keep driving. You keep moving closer to California, right? Meet yourself where you're at. You're not starting over. You had a lot of learning experiences from New York to Cleveland. Learn the lessons. Meet yourself where you're at and keep moving forward. We're going to get flat tires. You know, somebody's going to throw a nail. Life is going to throw a nail in the road of our life that we're traveling on. We are going to get flat tires. From here until the day we die. (laughs) Get used to it, right? Does that mean that our life is over? Does that mean that we're stuck with this flat tire? Oh, I can't believe this. I got a flat tire. Why is this happening to me? I don't deserve a flat tire. Like I was supposed to get to uh, St. Louis by a certain time and now I'm not going to be able to because I got this flat tire. Why is this happening to me? My life is ruined. No, it's not. Learn from it. Maybe you saw something on the road and you you ran over it and you weren't paying attention. And so, you know, if you had been paying attention, maybe you could have missed it. Or maybe it was a situation where you couldn't have missed it. Learn the lesson. Learn from the experience. Have gratitude for what life is trying to teach you. Change your flat tire. And if you don't know how to change the the flat tire, I don't know how to change a flat tire, right? If you don't know how to change a flat tire, guess what? Ask for help. Because there's people out there that want to help you and they know how to change that flat tire. Ask for help. Change the flat tire. Learn the lesson. Accept life on life's terms and keep moving forward. Keep moving forward, right? Support is so crucial. And that's kind of what I was getting at with that analogy as well. And I know I say this in every podcast episode, and I probably will continue to say it in every podcast episode. But that's that's the fifth key right there is reaching out for support. We cannot do this alone. Look, change is painful. I'm not going to lie to you. Change is painful. Transformation is painful. But so is staying the same. And what I find is, I wasn't staying the same. I was getting worse. I was getting more depressed. And like I said, I had two choices. I had to ask myself, 
Am I going to keep doing what I'm doing and where will that lead me? Or am I willing to make a different choice today? I was willing to make a different choice because the pain of continuing on the path that I was scared me more than the pain of change. Change and transformation may be hard, may be painful at times, but it gets easier and the life you have to gain is worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. My life right now is night and day compared to what it used to be over five years ago. I mean, actually, even what it was just a year ago, what it was just six months ago. When you continue committing to improving yourself, becoming a better version of yourself every single day, you will not believe where your life will be in just a few months time, in a week, in two weeks, in a month, in two months, however long it takes. You will be amazed at what you can accomplish just because you took a different action. It's not going to be easy. You're going to feel uncomfortable because you're stepping out of your comfort zone. If we stay in our comfort zone and we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always gotten. And usually it gets worse. When you feel uncomfortable, it's because you are stepping out of your comfort zone and that is where true growth and transformation happens. It is the only place where growth and transformation happens. Embrace the uncomfortableness. You will not die from that feeling. You will not die. One of my other favorite quotes is, just when the caterpillar thought the world was ending or the world was over, it became a butterfly. You can become a butterfly as well, but you can't become a butterfly If you continue doing what you're doing, if you continue taking the actions you're taking or not taking, and you continue talking to yourself in the way that you're talking to yourself, holding yourself back by your limiting beliefs, you cannot become a butterfly that way. What have you got to lose by stepping a little bit out of your comfort zone. We're not saying step a mile out of your comfort zone. We're saying baby steps out of your comfort zone. What have you got to lose by taking a different action or doing something differently? You have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. So the call to action, number one, I want you to write down two small achievable and realistic goals that you're ready to commit to. These are the, this is the different choice you're going to make today. Two things. That's it. Small and achievable, but it has to be realistic. It has to be something that you can do, right? I want you to build on those things over time. The second thing I want you to do is to challenge your negative self talk. This may be very difficult for you. You may believe what the inner critic is telling you, but you have a choice. You can keep believing your inner critic, keep beating yourself up, or you can make a choice to listen to that other voice inside of you, that other voice that knows that you are not a failure, that knows that you are good enough, that other voice which told you to listen to this podcast. Listen to that voice. Affirmations are a great way as well to work on your relationship with yourself. And I would encourage you, if you are telling yourself um, various affirmations, to word it in the present tense. So instead of saying, I will love myself one day, to say, I love myself now, exactly as I am. I had to learn to love myself at 358 pounds. Because if I couldn't love myself at 358 pounds, there was no way I could love myself at 175. A number on a scale does not change your relationship with yourself. Yes, you may feel better physically. Yes, if you did it in a healthy way. Yes, you um, may have a little more confidence. But when you look at yourself in the mirror, most likely you're still not going to love yourself. Work on loving yourself right now exactly as you are and where you are in your journey. 
And the third part for the call to action is to find support. Hold yourself accountable with these goals. You know, don't just write them down on a piece of paper and shove it in a desk. Remind yourself of what you've committed to. Your integrity with yourself needs to be your number one priority. Because if we don't have integrity with ourselves, how can we be truly in integrity with anybody else? How can we fully be the best version of ourselves if we're not in integrity with ourselves? We can't. We can't. I encourage you to trust and enjoy the process. Trust the journey. Remember, it is a journey, not a destination. Progress, not perfection. Thank you so much for listening, and I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode. If you enjoyed this episode of the Warrior in Progress podcast, then please share it with your friends, share it with everybody. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast as well so you can get notifications on when I release new episodes. Meanwhile, you can follow me on social media. On Facebook, my handle is Fully Committed 13, and on Instagram, my handle is Fully underscore Committed 13. You can find out more about my work at mckeehealth.com. That's M C K E E H E A L T H.com. And make sure to download my free Tame Your Inner Critic Guide at mckeehealth.com. And you can learn how to stop beating yourself up, how to stop sabotaging yourself so that you can achieve your goals. Remember, you're a warrior in progress and you can do anything you set your mind to.